Let me make two comments before we begin. Some subscribers have made clear they don't like talking about Star Wars. They don't like Star Wars as a film. They don't like Star Wars TV shows. I understand that. We're mainly using Star Wars for heuristic purposes, just to uh, help us with the doctrines we're going to discuss. Secondly, this is just a short survey. I'm going to do more in depth. But I wanted to touch on how Quine's philosophy of naturalism has some very real-world implication. Quine himself was a very conservative person. He was a very extreme atheist. So his political orientation is on the right, but a lot of people have read into the philosophy that this actually has left-wing repercussions. And we're going to hear a little ridiculous rant of how Book of Boba Fett endorses or promotes communism. I don't think the person is serious, but they actually do touch upon a serious issue, which we can further develop. What? That's typical SJW behavior from the sand people. Always blaming someone else. They are usually the ones to start shit, then when the others respond, they play the victim. Like the Power Rangers in this episode, the sand people are also anti-capitalism and allergic to working. With all the times they've been murdered, I think it's finally time to stop being socialists, leave the deserts, become a part of the tattooing economy and get a job. Why don't they start a business? I'm sure they can get funding from a smart guy like Elon Musk and start mass producing their potent sand people drugs. That shit would make bank. You can call the company Sand X. Hell, get the real Elon Musk for the show. It's not like Disney actually respects Star Wars lore. But for those totally alien, the Tusken Raiders are a very primitive tribe in the universe of Star Wars. I don't think it's correct to call them socialistic. And in terms of Book of Boba Fett, I think we can actually see Boba himself as kind of capitalist, right? He is stealing things, but he's also negotiating deals. He's hanging on to property. He's defending it. So I'd actually imagine this is a kind of valorizing a kind of private capitalist. But that's me. If there is an ideology behind Book of Boba Fett. Is there anything serious going on here? Yes and no. In terms of Quine, Despite his own politics, he never read the politics as a part of his naturalism or his attack on Platonism, but others did. And we're going to briefly touch on Hayek and go more in depth in other videos. Essentially, Hayek was an extreme pro-capitalist. His initial attacks on socialism basically tried to link socialism to Nazism and how invariably, as he put it, it would lead people to the road of serfdom. So it seemed to be that he was promoting democracy and was against dictatorship. But later on, he actually worked with the Pinochet government and other dictatorships. So how to resolve this contradiction? Well, it's very clever, but using the work of Quine and Thomas Kuhn and others, he came up with this very extreme theory, which I'm going to do the basically the upshot. I don't think it makes any sense or works. But the idea is this, that formerly socialists argued for socialism on the basis of science. In other words, socialism is the direct outcome of science because socialism is a rational way to look at society. It's the most rational system. So as we approach better and better science, we should adopt socialism. And ironically, some people like Ayn Rand actually agreed, but they just made a different conclusion, namely that capitalism is the most rational system. And Hayek made an incredibly clever move, which I don't think works, but he actually went against both sides. He said, well, neither socialism nor capitalism should be defended on the basis of science because science itself doesn't work the way we think it does. Again, following Kuhn and Quine, science really isn't something that lies out there, right? He doesn't disagree that physics or chemistry or that there are solid scientific results, but when it comes to society and economics, these are not mind-independent fields. We create economics, we create economies, so all the knowledge we have is social in nature. It's always changing, it's always subjective. So the idea that we should, quote, become socialists because we believe in science doesn't make any sense because even science doesn't work like that. It's a very loose dynamic system, right? We go from paradigm to paradigm. It doesn't work in this kind of pyramid scheme. We just have knowledge at the foundation and keep building upwards. It's a much more chaotic system. The problem is, that if we go all the way with this, and this is the problem that Quine and Kuhn faced, is, well, if we don't have any foundationalism at all, then we end up with relativism. And relativism, whatever you think about it, is self-defeating. If you think all knowledge is socially constructed, then that means the theory that knowledge is socially constructed is also a social construct, which means it's not really true, right? It's not objectively true. It's just subjectively true. And I don't think Hayek himself was able to resolve that contradiction. 
They didn't resolve that central paradox. And Quine and Kuhn still struggled with that. They tried to back off the more extreme implications of their philosophy, but they didn't deny it. They did admit, yes, relativism in a certain sense is implicated once we deny this kind of platonic way of doing things in science. So how does this get to, to socialism? Well, Hayek assumed that the reason we had socialism in the first place, hence the Star Wars, is yes, as primitive tribes, we were altruistic. We were bound together through tribes, through clan kind of membership. And so socialism and altruism at the beginning made sense for this very primitive form of organization. But as we move further and further away from that in civilization, we have to get rid of those kind of socialist instincts. So it ironically actually admits a lot of the socialist case to make sense that, yes, we should at times give in to altruism and group instinct. However, for us to really progress further and further in civilization, we have to get rid of those instincts or suppress them with these kind of abstract rules which he lays out in his philosophy. As I say, it's an interesting magical trick of combining Quine and Kuhn with Milton Friedman and others and trying to move beyond their approach because Milton Friedman was an extreme positivist. So it's an interesting way that post-positivism can be merged with these political ideologies. At the end of the day, there really is no politics behind it. You can be a, quote, a relativist or a naturalist and become a conservative or a leftist. But it is interesting under Hayek's direction, he took it in a very pro-capitalist liberal direction, which I don't think is coherent or even ethically very sustainable given his connection to fascism. But there we are. So in a weird way, it is true that yes, when we're depicting tribalism, in a certain sense, yes, we are describing socialism, though I think this is more of a caricature than anything else. But as we're going to see, yes, there are very interesting ways that politically Quine and Kuhn help birth a lot of movements they never expected to, but still affect us today.